Sorry about that. Um, how have you been? All right, so as you can see here, we've already failed the first step of the Spikes protocol, creating a safe and inviting environment. So our setting here obviously is full of distractions. Our doctor it was just on the phone right before speaking with the patient. That's right. The very first message the patient gets is that he is not her top priority, and that's not good. No, not so good, doctor. Since the last time I saw you, these headaches I was telling you about have gotten even worse. I mean, they're increasing in intensity and actually become more steady. Did you see that? She yawned. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, so, so he's explaining his perception uh, of his current circumstances. And obviously, in this case, the doctor is not giving him the respect or the attention that he deserves. Absolutely not. That big yawn was like, dude, you're boring me. Please stop talking now. And that's not good. And um, I just don't know what to do. I think it might be something really serious, like I said last time. Well, I hate to tell this, but you were right. You have a brain tumor. A, a brain tumor? So remember that step three was I invitation. We need to have a moment to let the patient know we have some news to share and we want to see if they're ready for it. We also want to give them an opportunity to invite anybody to be present with them when we share this bad news. And as you can see here, our doctor did not do that. She went right in and just shared the bad news with them without giving him a chance to brace himself. And that can have a very powerful negative effect on the patient who may not be ready to receive such information. Yeah, you have a brain tumor. Oh my God. Oh, oh. Sorry, I gotta take this. And again, you're seeing a failure of setting. By not turning off the phone, it opens up for the opportunity to be distracted again with a phone call. And we can also see how that affects the patient. Watch as his level of anxiety and panic increases over this interview. Doctor, you, you said I had a brain tumor. Uh, that's right. I'm really freaked out right now. Oh, well, you know, it happens to the best of us. Don't worry about it. I mean, you know, too bad. All right, again, so you can see here, the, the doctor said, don't worry about it. They're speaking in an absolute here. They're basically saying, this isn't a big deal. This isn't a problem. And this very well could be a problem. So again, we don't want to be giving this patient false hope, and we certainly don't want to minimize the feelings that they're having right now. Plus, remember in our other video, by telling the patient don't worry about it, you're basically giving them a ridiculous statement. She just told him he has a brain tumor. How is he not going to worry about that? And she dismisses his feeling as foolishness, and that is definitely not good. How big is it? Uh, uh, you want to know how big it is? Um, it's 30 centimeters. 30, 30 oh, centimeters? Wait. Oh, did I say 30 centimeters? Um, no, 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 no. It's three centimeters. And you know, it's in the frontal lobe of your brain. So if that baby is malignant, well, you might not have much time. You might have noticed at this point that the, pa or the doctor starts to speak with a lot of medical terminology. We're hearing frontal lobe. We're hearing malignant. These are terms that we commonly use in medicine when we're speaking to our peers. But they're not words that we should be using when we're speaking to our patients because these words are they're probably not going to understand, they're going to confuse the patient, and they're going to make the patient even more concerned about their current state. Also, accuracy of information becomes crucial here. Notice she made a mistake and said the tumor was 30 centimeters large, and that caused unnecessary psychological stress on top of the stress the patient was already feeling. Now, people do make mistakes and it's unavoidable, but she sort of laughed afterwards and said, oh, ho, ho, I'm sorry, it's only three centimeters, further making light of the situation and making the patient feel even more uncomfortable. Am I, what are you saying? Are you saying I'm, I'm gonna die? Uh, you know, there's a possibility, but, uh, sorry, just a second. She offers no hope whatsoever. Am I gonna die? There's a possibility. Let me get my phone. Right, yes. So, so we should always err on the side of softening the blows. So 
Whenever we say something to the patient, we should not lie to them or give false hope, but we should at least say it in such a way that gives the patient a feeling that there's still a chance. Absolutely. And honestly, at this stage, it's still early. There's no way she could know. Well, maybe she could know, but more likely they need to do more tests to know the nature of the tumor, to figure out how to treat the tumor. So she cannot say with 100% certainty that he's going to die, I think. Exactly. So if you remember with our last video when we were talking about getting a biopsy, our doctor did his best to actually decrease the worry and concern that the patient would feel about that process. But here in this case, our doctor actually does the opposite. They're actually talking about the worst case scenario when it comes to getting a biopsy. And that's something we should avoid whenever we're talking to the patient. That's right. Remember the key word is as much as possible offer hope without offering false information and in this case she doesn't do that at all yeah with with a bone saw they'll just like, a bone saw yeah, but don't worry they they do this thing all the time you know it's okay so cut it open take a better look at it okay i, I, I don't know what to say well you'll be fine i mean it's not uh, sorry but I, I, i'm sorry but i, I gotta take this and so just wait in the hall and they'll make an appointment for you, okay? Okay, bye. Bye. I don't even know what to say. That was that was pretty terrible. Uh, she just said, wait in the hall, bye, and then got on the phone and talked about the birthday party or whatever she's talking about. I don't know what it is. But we could clearly see that she doesn't have any concern for the patient's well-being. Look at the level of stress and utter despair in his face as he's facing this horrible, life-changing news and her attitude towards the patient in general. And you can also see that we failed to finish out our spikes process. Our, our doctor did not show empathy at all throughout this whole encounter. And then we didn't even have a summary at the end. There was no chance to provide a a summary of the information that was provided to the patient, and no chance to even gauge whether or not our patient understood what they were told. Um, the doctors simply told the patient to wait outside and set up an appointment. This is a devastatingly wrong way to finish out. And of course, I don't have to say this, I know you guys know, this is an exaggerated example. But even though it's exaggerated, we can see step by step how the attitude of the doctor has a direct impact on how the patient receives bad news and the emotional trauma that comes along with different ways of giving that bad news. In our previous video, we could see by the end that the couple seemed to have faith in the doctor and in the process. While in this video, all we see is pain in the patient. She should.